Aloha YouTubers, Scuba Chris here. Now, I just got in a very special item here. This is the new Alijos 12 S2. Now, this was supposed to have come out the previous year, uh, but there were some issues um, that needed to be corrected. And it was on display at the iCast show, and just so happens iCast is gonna be next week again, but my job here, is to figure out a couple of things. I'm going to use this in the field and I'm going to try to figure out what type of line I'm going to put on it. Okay? Now, I got a choice. I have 30 pound mono. This is a bulk of um, ultra premium mono, 30 pound, 0 0.55 diameter. Okay? 30 pound test. Now, this would take only uh, 320 yards. Of 0 0.55 so I can only I mean if I was to fill this all the way to, up to the top there's 320 um, I usually don't fill it to the top so um, that's choice number one choice number two is 65 pound test braid now here I can get a lot of line on it 460 yards but when I'm gonna use 460 yards you know it's more than it's four and a half football fields to me, the fish is going to go like that. It should just keep going. It, it deserves to go bye-bye, right? My last choice is 80-pound braid. Now, this 80-pound braid here is you can get 400 yards on it. That's a lot. You know, I mean, for a lot of my bigger rigs, I have 400 yards mono, but this will take 400 yards, 80 of eminent braid. So, what would you do? Now, I was going to. I was in a rush. I think oh, I gotta spool this real fast because um, if I put the brackets in it, I have to put the brackets in the inside. Bolts will come down. If I don't do that um, before I go field testing, well, I'm kind of lost, right? But I'm thinking old school. Old school was that, like you know, with old um, senators that you had to put the bolts in here. Uh, that's not the case nowadays because look. They're, um, they're shorter, they go on the outside. So what happens is they mount from the outside going up like this. So that, that means you can change your line, put it on at any time, and you don't have to take line off to put in the bolts on the inside. So welcome to the future, right? So what are the advantages to using braid? All right, using braid means that I can put more yardage on my spool because it's thinner diameter and it's very strong so i can get a lot more line on it now what are the negative uh parts of using braid well if you're in an area with a lot of reef like here i'm in hawaii there's a lot of reef if if this starts touching the reef especially on the load it's going to break but it won't just snap i mean it'll start to fray first before it snaps but that is a danger okay so you have to kind of watch where you throw this now, I don't use braid in areas where there's a lot of high coral heads. I kind of like the flats to the open reefs. So that is the good and bad part about braid. I've been using mono all my life since I started uh, fishing from shore and trolling uh, from the mid to late 70s. I've always been stuck on mono. Now, what are the good parts about mono? Um, with, the, with the scratch resist resistant coatings, what you have nowadays you know it, it's going to resist a lot of the simple scrapes from coral okay so if if you would um, take this line put it across coral under load there's less chance of, of it snapping or fraying uh, it's going to withstand those sharper contacts than braid now uh, the bad part about mono is it takes a lot of space on your spool so you got to remember, if I use this, um, I'm only stuck with 30 pounds because it's rated to 30 for 320 yards. Now, if I go more than that, I'm going to have less line on the spool. So that's the good and bad point is I'm going to have less uh, yardage on the spool if I go with mono. If I go with the braid, I'll have more yardage. So you have to weigh out your pros and cons, figure the areas you fish in and what's going to be best for you. Okay, so what's my decision? I decided to go with the 80 pound eminent braid. Uh, the reason being is I'm going to get 400 yards on, on the spool. 
Well, that's what it's rated for. Um, I've used Spool in the past. I've had it rub against it. I mean, I had some good, good hits, like off Pearl Harbor, where I know I've hooked a shark or ray. It dives over the edge of the reef. I, I've actually had to throw away, you know, a whole spool because, you know, in the, it, about maybe a quarter way through, you can feel the line is all frayed because it went over the drop and it's going down, 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 and the line's rubbing up against the edge of the reef. And you know what? To this day, I still never had that, that braid break. You know, this eminent braid is good stuff by Soft Steel. So because of the success I've had using this in the past, I'm going to go with Soft Steel. But I'm going to go with the uh, 80. Now, I don't need to use 100. The 100 to me is um, for shore application for a smaller size reel like this, I don't think I'm going to need it. I, I actually probably would be better off using the 65-pound test braid. But that's, that's rated for 460 yards. Already 400 yards already is more than enough. Um, and I don't want to go to 100 also because it's going to be thicker. The, uh, the line uh, diamond will be thicker and the fish will probably see it easier than this one. So we're going to stick to the 80. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my fish on big game spooler to um, spool my conventional reel. But a lot of you are combined, meaning smart people are going to figure out, like, wait a minute, you're using a spinner meant for uh, spinning reels to spool a conventional reel? Yes and no. It's already rigged up. I already put, um, I cut some tape. So what happened is you got the bird area in the center here. I, I cut the tape in half, so I put electrical tape on each side, so I'm going to get a, a better hold. And... I'm all ready to uh, rock and roll, except that I did something different. I reconfigured this, so this is going to act as a tensioner. This part here will put tension on the line, and I spooled it through my line counter, and from the line counter, I got it to a feed arm coming into here. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to turn on the ratchet right now, just so you understand what I'm doing, but hear that? I am just going to manually spool it on. That's all I'm going to do, and I'm going to put some pressure on it while I'm doing it, because I, I don't have too many conventionals, um, so it, I don't have to go out and spend a lot of money on an expensive spooler. I mostly have spinners, but I can still use this as a tensioner to put enough tension on the line to get my line on accurately. As you know, I'm not going to just hold the reel loose. I'm, I already have it on the butt end of this rod that, that I no longer use. And I'm just going to use my fingers. I mean, I don't have to put um, band-aids or gloves on it because I'm going real slow and purposely laying the line on the spool, okay? So it's going to take a few minutes, but... It's going to go on correctly. Okay, as you can see, it took 335 meters. So that's 335 times 3.3. Three. Now, uh, this is just a simple thumb spin. Oops, <laughs> almost got away from me. You notice I just use one hand because the other hand is holding on to my cell phone. So it's just a simple um, thumb. 
action here and just going to see how long this will last. You know, for a basic thumb spin, that wasn't too bad because I really didn't, couldn't crank up on it. That's not bad at all. I mean, right now it just hit one minute. So it's still going. So when you put some weight on this, it'd be very interesting to see what kind of casting distance I have since it has a cast control. And it's a non-magnetic cast control. Well, I just hit a minute and a half, and it's just barely going, but that's not bad. 